Something exciting is happening. Many Jews today feel the need for revitalized Judaism. People are searching for a more vital and authentic mode of Jewish expression. And more than ever, we need to shift not only physically, but spiritually out of exile mode. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Chilo, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. Many people are seeking clarity as to the nature of Torah Shabal Peh the oral tradition. Can the rabbi please expand on this fundamental concept? The truth is that this question, this concept of what Torah Shabbat Peh is all about, where does it come from, how does it work, is one of the most important questions that uh, we could address, that we must address. And I think it's also widely misunderstood. Many people, and not just today, going back many, many centuries as well. Uh, many of the Chachamim, of the Jewish uh, sages, were uh, want to explain Torah Shabbat Peh in terms of a tradition whereby every single aspect of Torah Shabbat Peh, every halacha, every central concept in the Torah, in the Torah Shabbat Peh, in the halacha, uh, was received by Moshe Rabbeinu as, as we later received it ourselves. In other words, the process was one of passive, more or less passive, uh, transmitting, transmission of information from generation to generation. To il illustrate this, this point and this, this position, I will quote to you a pasuk from Sefer Shemot, Perek Yod Beth. Pasuk Tethwal, that's chapter 12, verse 15, speaking about Pesach. The Pasuk states, Shivath Yomim Masoth Tochelo, you shall eat Masoth for seven days. Ach Bayom Horishon Tashbitu Soor Ibatechem. However, on the first day, you shall remove all Soor, which is leaven uh, and Chametz, therefore, also from your house, from your homes. Anyone who eats chametz, his hayav karet, will be cut off from the Jewish people. This pasuk is the basis for the halakha, which is accepted and understood by all of the Chachamim, that the day of Erev Pesach, Yudalad ben Nisan, the 14th day of Nisan, is a day... Uh, an unusual day in that in the middle of the day something happens. What do I mean by that? Something happens. The, that which was mutar, that which was permissible during the beginning of that day becomes asur during the latter part of that day. Or to be more precise, from midday onwards it is forbidden minat Torah, from the Torah to eat uh, chametz. Whereas the first part of the day, according to the Torah, it is mutar, it is permitted to eat chametz. The Mishnah states in Masechet Pesachim, Perek Rishon Halacha Dala, chapter 1, Halacha 4, Rabbi Meir Omer, Ochelim Kol Hamesh, Vesorofim Bithilath Shesh. In order to understand this more uh, fully, we have to explain that we are talking about a day, an halachic day, which begins at sunrise and ends at sunset. And we're assuming for our purposes now that the day begins at 6, sun rises at 6, and the day ends, that is to say the sun sets at 6 o'clock, which means that every twelfth part of that, of that day is exactly one hour, according, uh, one sixty-minute hour, and that is called the Sha'az Zamanith. You have six Sha'od Zmaniyot, six, six such hours during the first half of the day, and six such hours during the second half of the day. The beginning of the fifth hour, therefore, is at 10 a.m., goes on till 11 a.m., and the sixth hour begins at 11 a.m. and continues on till the end of that hour at 12 o'clock noon, which is the end of the sixth hour, that is six hours of the day, and that is midday. Rabbi Meir states that one may eat hametz all of the fifth hour from 10 to 11, with sort of at the beginning of the sixth hour, that is to say sometime some short time after 11 a.m., you have to begin burning the chametz, so there will be no chametz that anybody could possibly 
make the mistake of eating uh, after the end of the sixth hour, when it is now asur mina Torah, forbidden according to the Torah. That is the view of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yuda states, Ochalim kol arba, we may eat during the fourth hour, which means between 9 and 10 a.m., according to the system that we explained. With Ochalim kol hamesh, and one has to uh, refrain from eating, but one does not yet have to burn, or one can even sell during that period, that during that fifth hour from 10 to 11. And when that fifth hour is over, now the beginning of the sixth hour, from 11 a.m. onwards, was sorofim with hilaf shesh, and then you begin to burn your leftover hametz. And that, as we know, is the halakha, according to Rabbi Yehuda. Rambam, in his perush on the Mishnah, states as follows. He says, It would have been reasonable to assume that seeing that the Torah tells us, seeing that on the first, it says on the first day you must get rid of all your leaven, you would think that you must do so from the beginning of that day. However, says Rambam, if it were not for the fact that the Pasuk says Ach, Bayom Harishon, uses the term Ach. In other words, what could the Pasuk have stated? It could have said, Uvayom Harishon, Tashbitu Somi Batechem. On the first day, do such and such. Or, um, without the Vav, it could be Bayom Harishon, Uvayom Harishon, something to that effect. But why does it say Ach, Bayom Harishon? The word Ach. Like the word rak, as Chazal explained in a number of places, and the Rambam explains here in his Perush on the Mishnah, Ki'ilu mi'et wa amar shamati bayom arishon eno mithilatayom ela mimiksatho. In other words, the word ach or rak comes to uh, signify, to explain to us that we're not talking about all of that day, but only part of that day. That, of course, leaves the question what part of the day? How much of the day is mutar? Uh, I will allowed to eat chametz, and how much of that day is asur when it comes to eating chametz? Regarding this, Rambam states, "Who amuro?" It says in another pasuk, "Lo tishhat al chametz dam zivhi." You are not allowed to slaughter the uh, korban pesach, the pesach sacrifice, when you still have chametz in your possession. And we know that the time from which one may begin to slaughter the korban pesach is from midday. And Rambam says, Rambam here says something very important and something very clear, very unambiguous. Rambam says that the fact that we know that from the beginning of the seventh hour, that is to say immediately after 12 o'clock noon, on Erev Pesach, on Yudalad Ben Nisan, it is forbidden in Torah to eat chametz. This is a Kabbalah. The word Kabbalah means a tradition, something which was received by Moshe Rabbeinu and which was passed on generation after generation down to the present time. That is the view of the Rambam on this issue and this is, uh, generally speaking, the view of Rambam on many such related issues and questions. He presents the, these uh, halachic facts, these halachic uh, givens that everyone accepts, all the Chachamim accept as, as well-known and uh, and unassailable halachoth, Rambam pre- presents them as kabbaloth, as traditions that were received by Moshe Rabbeinu and handed down through the generations. And this, of course, when you uh, take into account the fact that uh, the Rambam, just like his predecessor Rav Sa'ad Yagaon and others, were busy waging a battle against the Karaim and uh, doing whatever they could to win over those many Jews during that period of time. We're talking about 850, 900 years ago, 950 years ago, etc. A thousand years ago, the time of Rav Sadegon was roughly 950 years ago, uh, and the Rambam 850 years ago. Uh, at that time, there were many Jews who were drawn to the uh, words and the claims of the Karaim, who rejected the Torah Shabbat Peh, and they, these Chachamim, like Rambam, had to uh, do everything they could, in, in their, everything in their power, to show the, the Jewish people that this is not the correct path to follow. And it, it was quite convenient, shall we say, and, and uh, practical 
and perhaps convincing to claim that all these things that we know, that the halakha claims to be true, are based on a living tradition that we received from Moshe Rabbeinu. And this is what we find here in the Rambam in his Perush on the Mishnah. On the other hand, it should be uh, mentioned, it needs to be mentioned, it's very important to take note of the fact that this is not at all the only view on the subject. We find in Masechet Pesachim, Daf Hermud Aleph, that Rashi says something very different. Here the Gemara is also discussing this uh, day, the 14th day of Nisan, and discusses this Pasuk, Ach Rishon, and it says, Ach Hilek, the word Ach comes to divide the day or to uh, state that part of the day is mutar and part of the day is asur and this is a general rule, rule of thumb the word ach like the word rak comes to uh, distinguish between different parts within the same whole within the same entity Rashi says about this in Dibura Mathil ach hilek Alma therefore we can understand from this as Rashi mikhasat hayom mutar asur, and part of it is asur. Now, seeing that we understand from the usage, the word that is used by the Torah, ach be'omarishon, that part of the day is mutar and part is asur, me'ata yesh lanu lahalek. I take, read, I read it again. Take note. U me'ata yesh lanu lahalek. We are uh, at liberty. It is correct that we understand that we assume from this that we divide the day into two equal halves because you could of course divide it differently you could claim that till 10 a.m. it's mutar and after 10 a.m. it's asur or 9 a.m. or any other time during the day or till 3 p.m. but Rashi says In other words, says Rashi the fact that the Chachamim state that this isur of eating chametz on the Erev Pesach, Yud Dalet ben Nisan, begins at Hatzot, is not writ- written for us in the Torah, and, and it was not a Kabbalah, it was not an explicit tradition, as Rambam claims, but it was something which they, the Chachamim, derived from the Torah by using their, their understanding, their profound wisdom, and their experience with the Torah, and the language of the Torah, and the intent of the Torah, and their expertise in, in implementing the rules of the Torah in the real world, they understood from this that if the Torah is, dis- is distinguishing within this day between two parts, part of which is mutar and part of which is asur, then it, it must be, it's more than reasonable to assume, and that is what the Chachamim were kovah and fixed as the halakha, that it, half of the day is mutar and half the day is asur. So the fact that it, we say that mina Torah from hasot, from midday, Hametz is Asur, that statement, that determination is, was made by the Chachamim and not explicitly made by the Torah, and not because we received it as an explicit tradition. So says Rashi. So we find here a difference of opinion, a difference in approach between Rambam and Rashi. And I've always felt that Rashi's approach is much more authentic and and realistic when one looks at all the many derashoth and discussions of the Chachamim throughout the Mishnah, the Talmud, the Midrash Alaha, etc., etc. All the many halachoth and, and statements and derivations that we find the Chachamim make, many of them, I believe, can only be understood uh, according to the, in, in, in the according to and in, in the light of the explanation that Rashi uh, gives us here on, in Sahim Daf Hey. And this essentially uh, speaks to the question of what is the essence, what is the true nature of the Tarsha Baal Peh. The true nature of Tarsha Baal Peh is that it is the result of the meeting and the, the uh, interface between the Tarsha Bichtav, which comes to us from above, which is given to us by Hashem, and the meeting of this Torah with the Jewish people. When the Jewish people receive this Torah, and they are able to understand what to make of this Torah, how to implement it, how to turn it into a living uh, culture and civilization, which can be passed down from generation to generation, a way of life which allows us to, and, and, and uh, in fact commands us, 
to have an ongoing and profound relationship with Hashem, with the Creator, and to pass on these ideas from generation to generation. This is an, an amazing, uh, amazing result that only the Jewish people could possibly ca have come up with. The fact is that Torah Shebikhtav has been around in a translated form for many, many years, at least 2,200 years. Uh, that was the, t the time of the first translation of the, of the Torah into Greek. And over the centuries, over the millennia, the Torah has been translated into essentially every language on the planet. And yet, we see that of all the nations on earth, it is only the Jewish people who are able to take this Torah and understand what it is that Hashem wants, of them, to, wants them to do, what Hashem wants of us, and how to implement this and make it something uh, real, make it something that is alive, something that breathes, something that can adapt also to different, uh, different circumstances and realities, which is the nature of the Torah Shabbat Peh, as we see in many places in Chazal themselves, and develop a system for living, as it were, uh, living with Hashem, living, uh, walking with Hashem on a day-to-day -day basis. This is the unique genius of the Jewish people, and this is something that only Jewish people uh, possess. This can be likened to the rain falling from heaven, which is a great blessing. But if it falls on a on a field which is uh, made up of just rocks, or just a surface of rocks and and thorns and thistles, then we know that nothing will grow as a result. But when that same rain falls on a fertile fertile field, in in which field uh, seeds have been planted, seeds which allow which will uh, then grow, and produce something beautiful and wonderful, and uh, such as food or beautiful flowers, etc. Uh, when that rain comes and and uh, spurs it into life. That is the difference between Umoth HaOlam and the Jewish people. Umoth HaOlam do not have this ability to hear the word of Hashem and to know what to do with it. Hashem, And the Jewish people do have this ability. And this is a very, very important and profound uh, lesson and point that we must all understand and internalize if we are to understand at all what Torah is all about. If you like, we can put this in another way, using a more uh, modern, up-to-date uh, mashal, if you like. We all know that when it comes to computers, for example, we have hardware and we have software. The hardware is essentially a box, or some kind of device with uh, different parts in it. It's all very brilliant and, uh, and capable of amazing things, but without software, to know what to do with these devices, what to make of all these parts and pieces, all the potential that is uh, lying there in this box, then nothing will come of it. It will just remain a box. And this is exactly what happens when you give the Torah to the rest of the world. Nothing happens, essentially, or very little happens. I'm not claiming that um, the, the more true and honest and and spiritually aware of the Gentile nations are not uh, very impressed and very taken with the power of the Tanakh when they read the Tanakh in translation. They're not, they, when they read the words of Moshe or they read the words of Yeshayahu, they are very, some of them are very moved and they find it very, very significant and meaningful and uh, they take something from that. But to turn it into a, an entire civilization which survives for thousands of years, conveying transmitting and disseminating these ideas, this is something that they are not capable of doing. Only the Jewish people is capable of doing so. So that the giving of the Torah at Har Sinai was not just the giving of the Torah, uh, handing something over. It was handing it over to a very specific group of people. To, it was sending a letter to a very specific address. If it's sent to a different address, it will, it will not, the, that letter will not be read. And if it is read, it won't be understood. And we see uh, something relating to this idea in the uh, in these and these two approaches, perhaps to to uh, the Tashi Peh in the Nusach of Bavel uh, during the Tefiloth, the prayers of Shabbat. His Baruch Atah Hashem at Kadesh Shabbat. He who uh, sanctifies the Shabbat, the Sabbath day, that Hashem is the one who sanctifies that day. He doesn't mention 
that the Jewish people play a part, are, are part of this picture of the Shabbat. But the Nusach HaVeretz Yisrael explains or ex- expresses it differently. It says, Baruch Atah Hashem Kadesh Yisrael B'Yom HaShabbat, He who sanctifies the Jewish people and the Sabbath day. And the idea here is very similar. A Shabbat day, the day of Shabbat, when it is not observed by people who know what it needs to be done, how to observe such a day, what to make of such a day, what, to, uh, what kind of things one should do on such a day, and what kind of things one should not do on such a day, and how one should relate and um, look forward to that day and spend one's time during that day. When there is no such group of people, or there is no Jewish people on earth, and there is no meaning to the Shabbat, the Shabbat is, as it were, a... Uh, a person looking for a spouse and not finding one. It, has, it is not creating uh, the, the reality of Shabbat. The reality of Shabbat is when you have the Shabbat, which is given to us by Hashem, which is decreed by Hashem, and we have the Jewish people who know how to keep and to live according to the Shabbat. That is a reality. That is a complete uh, um, and meaningful, significant reality of Shabbat in this world. In the same way, when the Torah is given to the Jewish people, you have a true Kabbalah of the Torah, a true re- reception and uh, understanding and acceptance of the Torah because these people have this special uh, talent which was given to them by Hashem, ingrained in their being, part of the national psyche of the Jewish people, something we call Sirulat Yisrael, the special nature and, and spiritual um, talent and um, insight of the Jewish people to know what to make of the words of Hashem when they hear those words. But the, the other nations, when they hear those very same words, when they read the same text, do not know what to make of it. So it is like a letter that is sent to the wrong address. It's never read and it's never understood. And even if it is read, it won't be understood. But the, when it's sent to the right address and it's received by the right people and it is read by those people who understand this language and have what it takes within them, and not because they worked at it necessarily from the outset, but because it was something that was given to them, that was created within them as part of their inheritance, their spiritual inheritance from their forefathers, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, then these people know what to do with the Torah, and then they create what we call Judaism. That is why Judaism is what we know it to be, and not what the Karaites, for example, claim it to be. And that is why, uh, according to the Karaites, essentially there is no such thing as Judaism. Almost everything that we know and that we understand and we uh, identify with Judaism are foreign. All these ideas are foreign to Karaites who have no connection to the Tash Pair. Because without that inner wisdom and understanding and insight and uh, unique spiritual capacity to hear the word of Hashem and to know how to turn it into a living uh, form of activity, a, a living form of human uh, civilization on this earth, to turn it to, to the national uh, endeavor of the, of the entire people, this is something that only the Jewish people are capable of doing. And the concept of understanding what the Torah means and implementing in the real world, we see already at the very be- uh, inception of the Torah, from the very beginning, from the first day when the Torah is given. We find in Sefer Shemoth, Perek Yoteth, Pasuk Yod, Exodus 19.10, the Torah states, Vayomer Adonai al Moshe, Lech al Ha'am. Hashem said to Moshe, Go to the people. Vapidashtam hayom umahar. Literally, sanctify them or prepare them today and tomorrow. Vachibbasu simlotham. And tell them to uh, wash their clothing. Vahayu nechonim layom hashalishi. And tell them to be ready for the third day. Why? Because on that third day, Hashem will descend upon Har Sinai. Later it says in Pasuk Tethwal, Pasuk 15, that he went and did this. He acted on what Hashem had told him. What did he say to them? He said, Be ready for, th- uh, for three, after three days. Some explain that it means on the third day, and some it means some say that it means prepare, prepare yourselves for three days, according to which Moshe Rabbeinu himself was Mosif Yom Midaatho, as the Gemara says in Masechet Shabbat, 
Daf Pezayin that he that he uh, Moshe, according to one of you of Rabbi Yosei, Moshe Rabbeinu added one day of his own, uh, based on his own understanding and his own uh, wisdom. Al Tigeshu Alisha, do not uh, come into contact with the woman. It did not say, did not come into contact with the woman in the original Pasuk, in the original statement said by Hashem to Moshe Rabbeinu. It just said, prepare them, kidashtam, sanctify them. It didn't say exactly in which way. It didn't say anything about a woman and tell them to wash their clothing. Moshe Rabbeinu understood what was meant by this, even though it wasn't explicitly stated. And Moshe Rabbeinu said to them, uh, you must refrain from relations with your wives and you must uh, wash your clothing, as, as Hashem stated. You must prepare yourselves to receive the Torah. And according to the view of Rabbi Yosei, he also even added a day for reasons that we don't need to go into right now. But the fact is that we see already from the very inception of the Torah, the reality of the Torah in, in the world, as soon as the Torah is given, even before the Torah is given, there is a Torah Shabbat Peh. In other words, there is this uh, recipient uh, at the other end who under hears the message, understands what to, what to do with this information and turns it into a living reality. So that the Torah is is only a Torah, the only re, 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 reality of Torah is when there is uh, a Torah which comes from heaven and is received by those here on earth who are able to hear it, to understand it and to live according to that Torah and to turn into something living and uh, something real something which exists here on this earth which can be made to to function and to where necessary also um, be ad adapted and uh, make itself fit the the time and the place the cer certain realities that is this is the nature of the Tasha Baal Peh and this is this is all based and all flows from the special unique uh, capabilities and insights of the Jewish people which which were part of their psyche, part of their makeup from from their inception. And this understanding of Tasha Baal Peh, which to some might seem quite radical, is based exactly on what we saw in Rashi and Seher Psachin Dav He, and uh, the, the uh, authority of the Chacham who most clearly enunciates these ideas uh, as we have done here is Rav Kook in uh, the words which one can find in the first chapter of the book of Rotha Torah, Rav Kook makes, makes this case in a very powerful, very lucid and very profound way. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message, and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.